Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host for the week, John Troyer. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, Ildiko Vansha, uh, coming off the Edge keynote presentation this morning. Uh, she is the ecosystem technical lead with the Edge Computing Group as part of the OpenStack Foundation. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's uh, coming into the show, Edge is one of those things that was actually pretty exciting to talk about because Edge is you know, not only super hot, but when I thought back to previous shows, this is the sixth year we've had the cube here, and my fifth year doing it, it's like, wait, I've been talking to all the telcos for years here. <laughs> NFV was one of those you know, use cases, um, and it, when you connect the dots, it's like, oh, Edge, of course. You know, uh, I, I, I said, uh, you know, th this conference is actually you know, hipster when it comes to you know, <laughs> Edge. We were, we were totally covering it you know, well before we called it that. So uh, you know, explain to us uh, you know, your role uh, in the foundation and uh, what, what led to kind of the formation of, uh, uh, of this track. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm the ecosystem technical lead within the foundation, which is basically a role that belongs under the business development team, so I'm basically building connections uh, with our ecosystem members. I'm trying to help them succeed with OpenStack, both as software package and as a community. Uh, we are embracing open source, of course, so uh, I'm also trying to advocate for um, involvement in open source because I think that's a key. Like, you know, picking up an open source software component and use it, that's a, that's a great start. But if you really want to be successful with it and you want to be able to successfully build it into your business model, then getting involved in the community, um, you know, both enhancing the software and maintaining the software, that's, that's really key. So my role is also like onboarding companies as well. Uh, to be active members of the community. And uh, my focus is shifting towards edge computing. Um, the history of edge computing in OpenStack basically started last May uh, when uh, Beth Cohen from Verizon uh, described their uh, use case, which is you know OpenStack in a tiny box in production. It's like, oh, wow. So um, that was also a little bit of an eye opener for us as well, that yes, it's telecom, it's 5G, but this is that thing that that's called edge and Maybe this is something that we should also, you know, look deeper into. So we went to San Francisco last September, open dev, uh, 200 people, architects, software developers, uh, trying to figure out what edge computing is. We had, I think we had the question at every single session, someone asked that. Okay, yeah, so what did you mean exactly when you said edge? Because you know, from from the nature of the architecture, like you have the central cloud and then the the sites on the different well, but there layers are several or edges levels. depending on um, yes. how far you want to go. So exactly, for, and for you and OpenStack, what, what does edge mean, or all the above? Um, with OpenStack, so after OpenDev, when we realized that it's not really a well-defined term, uh, we wrote up a white paper. Uh, it's at openstack.org/edge. Uh, it's a short one, really, to just set the ground for what edge computing is. And what we came up with is so don't imagine like a two-sentence definition for edge computing because I still strongly believe that doesn't exist. And anyone who claims it, they <laughs> that's not true. So. Um, what we did with the white paper is basically we set characteristics and, and uh, criteria that defines uh, cloud edge computing per se, like um, you know what people are talking about when you're moving out the, the compute and networking closer to the edge, uh, like what that means from the bandwidth perspective, from how you will manage it, um, what that means for security and all these sort of things and you can basically characterize what edge means. So we rather described these layers and uh, how far we go, and as far as like you know the edge, the very end edge device, and like the IoT sensors, that's not a target of OpenStack. So OpenStack itself is uh, you know infrastructure as a service. So our edge computing group is still staying on that layer. Um, the edge computing group itself is focusing on the angles, what Edge brings on to the table, um, all these requirements, you know, collecting the use cases and trying to figure out what's missing, what we need to implement if as I can, next maybe steps. If, if I can repeat, and maybe I'll get it right or wrong, right, it, it, the, the idea is 
at a cell tower or at a remote office or branch office or some closet somewhere, um, uh, there is a full set of OpenStack running, maybe a minimal set of OpenStack, but it's, it's live, it's updatable, you can update services on it, you can update the actual OpenStack itself, and it doesn't need bespoke hardware necessarily, but it's now updatable and part of a bigger multi-cloud infrastructure from some sort of service entity or enterprise. Yes. Is that uh, fair? Uh, I think that's fair. I mean, so there's OpenStack itself that, that people know very well, you know, a lot of projects. So when we talk about Edge, obviously we don't want to say that, okay, pick the whole thing and install all the 60 projects because that's, you know, that's really not suitable for Edge. So uh, what, for example, the group is looking into that, which OpenStack components are essential for edge, and also the group is de defining, you know, small edge, medium edge, what that means from hardware footprint perspective. So just to figure out, you know, what the opportunities are there, what will fit, what will not fit. So um, OpenStack itself is very modular by today. So you can pick up the services that you need. So what we discussed, for example, this week is Keystone, identity, you need it, of course. So how much that fits into the edge scenarios, and I think, the main conclusion of the forum session yesterday was that, yeah, Keystone supports federation, we talked through the cases, and it seems like that it's kind of there. So we now need a few people who will you know, sit down, put together the environment, and start testing it, because that's when it comes out that, you know, almost there, but there are a few things to, to tweak. But basically the idea is what, what you described, you know, pick up the component, put it there, and, and work with it. We also have like another project called Cyborg, which is fairly new, that's for hardware, hardware acceleration. So it, it is providing a framework to plug in GPUs, FPGAs, and these sort of a bit more specialized hardware, which will be really useful for edge um, use cases to OpenStack. So um, that's, for example, something that China Mobile and the uh, OPNFE Edge Cloud Group is looking into to use. So I really hope that we will get there this year to, to test it in the OPNFE Faros Labs in action. So we also have pretty great cross-community collaboration on you know, trying to figure this whole thing out. Yeah, it, it often uh, helps if we have examples to talk about uh, to, to really explain this. Uh, Beth Cohen, we, we spoke with her last mm -hmm. year and absolutely caught our attention, got a lot of feedback from the community on it. Uh, had Contron uh, on earlier this week talking about, as John was saying, you know, here's, here's some small device there with the, you know, a little blade and you know, to run in you know, pieces of open stack there to be able to run. Uh, anything from the keynote or, you know, boy, I think there's 40 uh, sessions <laughs> that you've got here. Uh, if you can, give us a couple of uh, kind of examples of some of the use cases that we're seeing to kind of bring this edge to uh, reality. Um, example use cases is, um, we just heard this morning, for example, someone from the, the textile industry, like how to detect uh, issues with the fabric. Uh, so this is like one new uh, manufacturing use case. I also heard another one which is not checking the fabric itself, but basically the, the company who manufactures the, those machines that they are using to, to create the fabric. So they would like to you know, have a central cloud and have it connected to the factories. So being able to monitor you know, how the machines are doing, how they can improve those machines, and also within the factory to monitor all the circumstances. Uh, because for all the chemical processes, it's really important that the temperature and everything else is just you know, clicks because otherwise all your fabrics um, will have to go to trash. Um, so that's manufacturing. Um, a lot of telecom 5G, obviously that is really, really heavy because that's the part of the industry uh, which is there today. So with 5G, all those strict requirements, um, this is uh, really what we are mainly focusing on today. We are not spe specializing anything for, for telecom and, and 5G use cases, uh, but we want to make sure that all our components fit into that environment as well. Um, in the white paper, for example, you also could see the, the retail use case. Uh, I'm not sure whether that will be exactly on stage this week, but uh, that is also a great example on like, Walmart with a lot of stores around, uh, so how you manage those stores because um, 
they're also not wanting to uh, do everything centrally. So they would like to move the functionality out. What if the, the network connectivity is cut? They still have to be able to operate the store as nothing happened. Um, so there are a lot of segments of the industry who already have uh, kind of really well-defined use cases. And uh, what we see is that there's many uh, overlapping between the requirements from the different segments that we can work yeah. on are, to address. Are we seeing uh, things like AI and ML uh, coming, coming up in these conversations also? Uh, yes, like I think it was the, the manufacturing use case when, when I heard that they are planning to, to use that and um, it's popping up. I think as far as our group is concerned, we are more looking into, uh, I don't know, let's say lower level requirements like um, how you maintain and operate uh, the hundreds and thousands of edge sites, um, what happens with security, what happens with monitoring, what happens with all these sort of things. Like uh, we have a new project rolling in under the foundation umbrella called Airship, which is basically deployment and lifecycle management, which is supposed to address you know, one of the aspects that you were talking about on Okay, so how you manage this, how you upgrade this. Mm -hmm. And uh, upgrade is, again, uh, a really interesting question because I think I talked to someone yesterday who was like, yes, I the Contron guys, they, they were saying that, yeah, upgrade, it's really ambitious, so let's say that maybe 18, 24 months or something like when a telco operator will decide to upgrade something out in the edge because, you know, it's out there, it's working, let's not touch this. So when we talk about upgrade, even that I think will depend on the bits of the, the industry that what pace they will mm. decide to, to take. And Are there any particular surprises that or learnings that you've had this year after talking with this community for a week now? Um, you said, well, it, last year, uh, I was very impressed last year uh, when uh, they got up on stage and talked about that. That kind of expanded my mind a little bit. You've been working with this now for a year. There's a whole this whole track and forum sessions. Anything you're excited about taking to the future or learnings or surprises that, oh, this is really going to work and, and or anything like that? Any parts of it that are really interesting? Um, you talked about security upgrades. I mean, we've talked about a lot of the technical components, but it seems it, like I it's think, working. I think at this point, at least on, on my end, um, I think I, I'm over the, the surprise phase. So what surprises me the most is how many groups there are out, out there who are trying to figure out what this whole edge thing is and uh, what we need to uh, really focus on among the, you know, the technical requirements is that how we are working together with all these groups just to make sure that the integration between the different things that, that we are all developing and working on is smooth. So like um, we've been working together with the OPNFE community for a while now. It, it, it's, it's a really fruitful relationship between us. Like, uh, seeing OpenStack being deployed in a full stack uh, environment and being tested, that's really priceless. And we are planning to do the same thing with, with Edge as well. And we are also like looking into ONAB, Acrino, um, Etsy Mac. So looking into the open source groups, looking into the standardization, and really just trying to ensure that when we talk about open infrastructure, that that really is uh, developed, designed and developed in a way that, that integrates well with the other components. Uh, it's synchronized with the standardization activities because uh, I think especially in case of edge, uh, when, when we say interoperability, that that's you know a level higher uh, than what we call the interoperability on the telecom level. I think, like when you just imagine one operator network and you know applications from other providers popping up in that network and components that just realizing the network popping up from different vendors and this whole thing has to work together. So I think um, OpenStack and open infrastructure has a really big advantage there compared to any proprietary solution because we have to address uh, this, I think, really big challenge, and it's also a really important challenge. Ildiko, really appreciate you giving us all the updates here on the edge track, the keynote, uh, definitely one, one, one of the areas that uh, capturing our attention and uh, lots of people out there, so thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, for John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman, lots more coverage here from the OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. Thanks for watching theCUBE.